So I'm uh, Michael Lambert, a fellow in social inequalities here at uh, Lancaster University today talking about uh, researching inequalities. So can I begin by asking, uh, who are you? Who am I speaking with? Hi, thank you, Michael. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm Melissa Fernandez Arrigoitia. I am a lecturer here in the sociology department, officially a lecturer in, lecturer in urban futures, um, and I teach gender and women's studies as well as feminism and social change uh, in the department. And so what is it that, that you do? OK, well, I mean, I, as I said, I teach gender and women's studies, so you'll see as, as I describe my research how, how that how that comes in. In terms of uh, research, um, broadly speaking, I do research into housing and the home. Um, and I do research in housing and the home, both in the global north and in the global south. Um, I've done that comparatively and I've done that uh, quite locally and focused in the local context. Um, and so specifically, really what I've been looking at over the years, probably over the past 12 years or so, is the ways in which the home, the realm of the home is kind of made and unmade. And I use that phrase of making and unmaking quite deliberately. So when I think about home as a space that is unmade, I'm talking about all of the forces, global and local, that are um, kind of influencing the ways in which uh, home is dispossessed, um, the forms of, for instance, evictions, things that are kind of pushing people into homelessness, things that are um, changing the urban context, you know, processes of gentrification, other forms of displacement, etc. When I talk about the making of the home, I'm talking specifically about uh, really kind of civic led, um, group led alternative forms of homemaking. So it's really almost quite the opposite to the home unmaking. So this, these are groups, schemes, projects that are engaging uh, with really um, alternative modalities of, of being and of doing in the world, specifically through housing. And there's a whole range of ways in which that happens and that happens differently and differentially in different places. So I'm interested in both of those um, dynamics. What I like most about that kind of summary is is the way that with the kind of ethos of the, the Centre for Alternatives to Social and Economic Inequalities is to kind of think globally uh, and act locally. And, and already what is really apparent is the way that uh, it's about a recognition, uh, a researching and evaluation of, of what is difficult, wrong, problematic and unequal in society, but also how that can be altered by working with and through organisations from the from the bottom up to kind of create meaningful and sustainable alternatives and that really comes across very strongly. Mm -hmm. So how do you uh, kind of unpack all of this from a, a research perspective? How do you go like methodologically and analytically? How, how do you do this? Yeah, so I guess analytically really what's been at the forefront always for me have been two things. One is is this kind of framework that I've mentioned around homemaking and unmaking, which comes from quite an interdisciplinary tradition really. Uh, of thinking about um, the home from a kind of human geographic, critical human geographic perspective, critical uh, urban sociology perspective, uh, and a feminist perspective that is kind of valuing the home and the work of homemaking uh, in its broadest sense. Um, so both the home as a social and a material space that tends to be uh, devalued, as we know, um, and you know, there's incredible work from, you know, theories of social reproduction and feminist theories that, that speak to this. So, so I've been very interested in, in thinking about the home from, from by bringing these, these traditions and these disciplines together and thinking about the home both socially and materially, but also historically and in a kind of contemporary way. So I, in the past, not so much recently, but I have looked at um, the combination of how, you know, activism is a contemporary force that reflects things that are happening today, um, and looking at that, you know, looking at that through the activists themselves and the work that they're doing, um, but also looking at archives. So delving quite deeply into archives and trying to make sense of what's happening today in relation to, to history and specifically in relation to racialized and gendered histories of housing production and housing dispossession and seeing how these things that are happening today uh, are actually rooted in, in longstanding kind of um, uh, historical trajectories. Um, so, so that's kind of analytically in terms of, uh, you know, and that informs obviously my methodologies. I've already talked about working with activists, working in the archives. Th those are kinds of some of the methods that 
that I've used um, in terms of the 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 home on make the homemaking um, front. Uh, I say maybe ten years. I've been working quite ethnographically with a range of groups in in the UK, uh, specifically in London. And when I say ethnographically, I mean I've been kind of following the creation of of group development. Uh, and so trying to understand really closely and upfront um, what are the kinds of issues that arise when people come together to try and do something quite differently, quite radical and an alternative in society. And so that involves attending meetings maybe every month. I did that for about five years, you know, taking time off of my weekend to 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 to, to be with them and to do that work of not just observing, but actually participating. So. There was a real reciprocal relationship involved in this one group that I followed for a long time of, you know, I was the official note taker for them. And that was almost like a gift uh, that they then allowed me to participate in other ways that, you know, we all had to cook food and bring it every week. You know, I was very much a part of the group in that way. Um, similarly, I've been following a, another group, a co-housing group in London for a very long time that, uh, you know, I've, I've engaged in all sorts of um, research collaborative um, projects with them. And, and that has shifted over time um, as trust uh, has developed. So I've done um, very traditional kind of interviews, in-depth interviews and focus groups, but also I've engaged in uh, diary work with them. I've engaged in bringing in architects, the, the designers that they themselves have worked with, but then kind of shifting that relationship and trying to help them kind of speak back to the architects and having the architects teach them about living in their co-design space in a different way. So trying to think again about the material and the social uh, in different ways by by bringing these different participants together and and, and kind of using my role as a researcher and as a participant and the knowledge I bring kind of analytically trying trying to bring it to bear in a really practical way that feels useful for them, but that I'm also getting something in terms of research and and kind of finding out things about power dynamics yeah. of these various actors. So it's not just about them telling me something, but actually kind of finding out something about about power and about my powers. So I'm constantly kind of questioning these these things through the methods that I use. I don't I try not to take them for granted, I suppose. So can I use that final point about the the place of power, which I think is integral in trying to understand uh, inequalities? And then you've already talked quite a lot about the kind of taking for granted and built in and structured inequalities in, in society and how they fit to your research. But can you just give or kind of reconvey at least uh, one example of how your research engages with, with inequalities as an issue? Yeah. Um, yes. So one example, again, I'm, 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 I'm going to speak to this question of um, collaborative housing research yeah. that, that I'm most engaged with at the moment. I mean, I have lots of other examples from other pieces of research. Um, but for instance, um, this is a sphere that that often gets critiqued and kind of left out of the conversation of inequalities because yeah. there's an assumption that uh, these schemes are actually very white middle class schemes and therefore they don't fall into uh, what we tend to think of as inequality. So they're almost like by de facto not relevant, not important, way too niche, you know, a little bit too alternative, um, you know, what, what matters here. And I think over the years what I've found is, number one, the fact that that those questions are, you know, that that critique is even leveled against these groups already raises really fundamental questions about inequality, because if they do have that classed race component, that that means that they might be reproducing certain social exclusions, then we I think it's very interesting and important to find out how that might be happening and, and why it might matter. Um, but my research uh, and the, the work of many others in the UK and, and across Europe, um, because this is a kind of a burgeoning field uh, within housing studies, um, is that actually these are quite diverse um, communities, um, diverse uh, in terms of age, in terms of race, in terms of uh, abilities, in terms of economic capacity, educational levels, um, yeah, ethnicity, uh, levels of health, gender, uh, there's a whole host of ways in which um, looking in depth into these projects reveals a set of um, uh, inequalities within 
but also a set of really interesting challenges to those inequalities because the way that they're set up um, often, I'm not going to, you know, they are, there are many ways in which they're problematic, they're imperfect, um, but there's a recognition of that imperfection and there's an attempt by many of them to try and tackle and think about uh, and, and, and create systems, governance systems, modes of communication that actually challenge those very inequalities that, that, might, that might be within and, and without the community. And that, you know, that might be around, you know, that, that might converge around alternative economies, uh, that might converge around thinking about uh, gender inequalities and trying to create communities that are more equal in some way, safer for certain groups. So there's women specific projects, there's LGBTQ plus I specific projects, um, but they themselves are challenging, you know, their own constitutions within. Um, so I think there's a lot of interesting things happening there that um, that not just tell us something about inequalities in society, and, and we have to be able to ask the right questions and develop the right relationships in order to kind of see that or try and try and see that, um, but also in terms of what they're proposing. And I think this matches up with with the center, right? And this interest with inequalities, what they're proposing as actual fundamental changes to the way that we do things and that that needs to start potentially at a really local level and a local scale, but asking those big, big questions at that local level and really thinking quite carefully about, you know, then then what needs to happen? Is it, you know, is it about how we engage with one another in a meeting, you know, and, and what that says about power inequalities and and let's work on this. And that might be something really specific. It might take a year to to even begin to shift the dynamic there. But but it takes it takes a lot and it takes a lot of time and energy. And and that's an inequality in and of itself. Who can engage with that with that time, with that energy? Um, but to me, that's a fascinating view in a very kind of real way about that relationship between power and its kind of um, encompassing aspects, but then understanding through that lived experience, through that ethnography, through that participation, through that involvement effectively about how you see, understand and reconstitute those and develop alternatives, both not just as a, an imposed kind of solution, but the way you're describing it is it's kind of a, um, a lived and embodied one, very mm -hmm. much so. Mm -hmm. So this leads me into the, the last question. And again, you've certainly answered this throughout in about your research from beginning to end. But I can just ask a, a more of a reflection on it about the, the kinds of groups, bodies, partners, organizations or societies that you're involved in working with in relation mm -hmm. to your research. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it has come through. I mean, I, I work fundamentally collaboratively, so I, I don't think I've ever done anything on my own. Um, beyond my PhD research, but that wasn't even really, I don't think I did that, you know, I wrote something on my own, but but all of it was involved and engaged with other groups and other people. And um, and, and that's just kind of carried on into everything else that I've done. Um, I can't imagine working otherwise. I just feel that it's, for me, and the kind of work that I do really important to engage with 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 groups of different kinds. And, and that will vary depending on the object of research, right? So when I think of the work that I did on social housing displacement, it was very important to work with activist groups that were kind of being impacted by that displacement, but also kind of um, adjacent activist groups that might be uh, interested in the topic in other ways or speaking to that phenomenon in, 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 in various ways. But it was also important to talk to um, to politicians that were engaged in policymaking and to housing um, housing planners and, and you know th that kind of thing so so I do that now with my co-housing work as well so I work very very closely with architects and designers um, that are involved in community-led housing design and community-led housing thinking uh, but also designers that are interested in things like health and buildings and the environment so these are like bringing in the questions, the bigger questions, social questions and trying to think, so who are the practitioners that are actually involved in this and, and having an impact in this field beyond the people that are actually then doing these groups, you know, these these projects as well. Um, I work with uh, local councillors, so when I now work in projects, I tend to bring in um, local authority practitioners of, of different kinds. I'm now involved in projects that, that look a lot at health and loneliness and social care. 
uh, in these projects. So I try and look for the people in local authorities that are working on that remit and bring them into the fold from the design and, and ask them for their advice uh, and bring them into activities, etc. So yeah, a whole host of, um, of different kinds of, of people. The other thing I did want to mention in, in, in our interview is, you know, that kind of brings it back together and that I work with closely is uh, this journal that I work with that's called the Radical Housing Journal. Um, that's that's a you know that that kind of brings together all of my research interests and, and collaborative practices and it's a group of housing academics and activists from right across the world that are doing incredible quite radical work um, at that intersection of critique and and doing um, and um, and you know we meet frequently um, across these time zones uh, to discuss these topics and to actually do something uh, that's kind of written and on the web and open access, um, but also that you know tries to generate other ways of of thinking about housing across languages in quite a you know kind of postcolonial decolonial critique, um, and and that's another way that I see my my collaboration kind of beyond research, like bringing the research to another space that's educational and activist um, as well. Yes. Thank you ever so much. I think you very much uh, convey that key dynamic of thinking um, globally and acting locally from beginning to end from your own making and making homes. And it's a fantastic showcase of the, the research you do, how it's done and why it's relevant to the 21st century thinking about inequalities. Thank you ever so much for your time. Thank you, Michael. It's really nice. Thank you.